I'm asking myself a question. Why vibrations never stop vibrating? From a unit space, two forces begin to appear. One moves this way. But suddenly, what happened? An equal and opposite force appear that moves this way. And the, the pulsation moves forward, but there's another force moving it backwards. So after some time, when you go forward, you have to move backward. And then when you move backward, after some time, you have to move forward. Interesting, right? We can call it the conservation of momentum, that the universe, which comes from zero, must preserve itself. So if it moves in a negative direction, there is another positive direction somewhere on the other side. And together, there will still be zero. The conservation of momentum, the conservation of energy, whatever way you want to call it. Think carefully. Where did the force of the other side coming to pursue come from? Well, it's because of my force. I was trying to move forward to the other side. Suddenly, I noticed the other force is moving very strongly towards me. So, in the very first place, it came from my action. Now, let's be smart. Now that you notice that in the very first place, it was your action which moves in that direction, which actually resulted from a force that's coming towards me. When I realize that, then if I cease my action, the anti-forces that's coming towards me will definitely automatically cease. It won't cease immediately, but it will surely cease, because my force has ceased. We realize what I've just said. Then you must begin to question, why is it that I'm not getting what I want? I'm sure you're asking that question many times. Why am I not getting what I want? Now I tell you why. The reason why you're not getting what you want is because when you have a force to get something from the world, there is an equal and opposite force of something wanting to get something from me back to itself. Because of this equal force, you're getting stalemated. Aha! Uh -huh. Now here lies the power of a man who can observe thoughts. You have two thoughts, right? One is going forward, and automatically, there's another force going backwards. It is because of this duality, two forces against itself, you're never getting what you want. But what if you were an observer of thoughts? You're a watcher, not part of the thoughts altogether, but you're just a watcher. The problem with everybody is that he's a thought and going in this direction. And of course, there will be another thought coming back into his direction, and there will be a stalemate of my intention. That's because you sit on the thought. You're moving and driven by the thought itself. But what if you were the observer of thoughts? And for many years, I have practiced the meditation of observing my thoughts. Not an easy process whatsoever. Not easy. If you want to observe your body, it's easier. That's called mindfulness. But what if you choose to observe your thoughts yourself? Not easy. So I did that initially in my beginning years. But one day something began to happen. When I observed my thoughts from its beginning to its end, Something extraordinary happened. The thoughts turned breath, and I turned breath. So what is happening? 
you must realize when there is a thought forward, there has to be a thought backward. Even if you don't sense the thought backward, it is still there. But the important thing is to turn the thoughts into breath, both of the thoughts into breath. Because when you turn them into breath, you bring them nearest to me. And this is where the miracle comes from. So what did the Torah say? The Torah says that God made the universe when he speaks. In other words, he made the universe from the breath that goes through the truth that speaks out the intention. But the world you see is not the voice. The world you see is a manifestation of the voice. The world you see is a thought. And thoughts have got anti thoughts. But the voice, the breath, does not have an empty breath. Breath is only one. And so you get your intention fulfilled when you can enter breath and speak from there. Unfortunately, this is where you have to follow my videos. How to turn thoughts into breath. I did that in meditation. And it took me 10 years to understand and to do it. And it is the secret of life and death itself. The technology is hard to explain. Very hard indeed. It involves knowing yourself. It involves understanding where the breath in your body is. It's to realize that the very true substance of your whole being is breath. And it's not just on head knowledge. That realization is in your own action itself. And this is where I began to understand who God is. Who am I?